the 15th. I got your oh, message you're that, really? that you, you know, you weren't, we couldn't drop them off. Them. No. We're trying to find some new locations in the ward to drop them. Um, I've gone to the BIAs to see which businesses will accept them. So we're just waiting to hear back. Well, I may get more. If you can get more, that's fantastic. Where would I get more? Um, I made two cars. Uh, we're in front of station 424. Uh, it's the, what do you call it? It's a rally? A it's carol singing. Carol singing. Carol singing rally to show support for our firefighters at the Runnymede Fire Station. So it was very short notice, but there were a lot of people here tonight. And there were, and you will notice that my residents come out at short notice. We had 24 hour notice for the public meeting on Sunday. Right. I think we had 48 hours notice for this carol singing rally this evening. And I saw people handing signed uh, petitions. That's correct. And multiple pages actually. Yes. And they're asking how to do more. Exactly. So residents are going out getting petitions to keep this station open. And I am accepting petitions from now until January the 11th because I want to present them to City Council at a special meeting on January 15th. I plan to get thousands of petitions to show the rest of Council that this station is important, it's a life-saving service, and it should not be cut. Um, we had MPP Mike Cole, who does not live in the area nor represent the area, but his daughter lives here. That's correct. And as a member of the provincial legislature, he's of the opinion that the city's running a, in his words, $300 million surplus, that there's no reason to close this fire hall. There is no reason to close this fire hall. The only reason it's under threat is because this administration has told all departments to come in with a zero, uh, zero increase to the 2013 budget. We will have some form of a surplus next year. Less than two million dollars will keep this fire station open. How many lives is it going to save? Last night, these firefighters helped deliver a baby just down the street. They got there quite a while before EMS was able to. So they don't only put out fires, they also go to medical emergencies. They also do a lot of education. They teach children about stop, drop and roll. They teach people about having smoke detectors on every floor of the house, carbon monoxide detectors. We have a lot of children visiting this fire station. This is one of the top fire stations for student visiting, which means education. So they don't just put out fires. Um, now, there was one point you made earlier uh, earlier tonight, which probably is the most important point. How many students? So we worked out, one of our residents worked out that this fire station on first response covers 5,200 students in all of our local schools. That did not include daycares. So that's 5,200 students. This is the first response during the school day. That's an awful lot of children. Do you have, you know, we may have a school of a thousand children just down the street here. Mm -hmm. What happens when this truck goes? What happens if our Swansea truck is out? Who's going to come to a school and put out a fire? I'm concerned about that and I think residents should be as well. So the children who go to these schools are not necessarily from this area for various reasons. Different programs that are at these specific schools may draw children from actually across the city. That might be the case. Not the elementary schools. Elementary schools okay. are more for local schools. There's quite strict boundaries. So no, the school down the street here from this fire station is in ward, okay. in my ward, right. because they have a French program, but you have to live in with a, with an okay. catchment area, and an English stream, you have to be in the catchment area. So some of these schools, yes, you would get from across the city, but most of them are actually local students. Uh, so you're protecting them during the day in school, and you're protecting them at night and on holidays when they're in their own homes. Okay, because uh, I remember I was actually in Fre extended French, so for a very brief moment in my life, I was at Swansea. Ah, Yes. So I in that's where I was four. thinking. Yes. Right? For me yes. it was it would have been grade seven. Oh, okay, going uh, into grade but, seven. But there yes. we are. Uh, so I'm I guess I have an interest as well, just as a resident of the city. Yeah. And I think uh, there's no reason actually to close it. I don't believe so, and no. And from what I learned on Sunday, because they do their job so efficiently, they have the best response time. That's right. Paradoxically, they actually happen to be the one to be looked at to be cut to level it out. That's right. So yeah. by doing their job the best, they actually are penalized. Yeah. At least on... It's ridiculous, isn't it? It doesn't make sense it to me. It doesn't make sense. And if you take this station
ocean out, that means that Swansea, when Swansea's busy, the south part of this ward where we've got high rise buildings are going to have to rely on trucks up on Dundas, either over Jane or Keel to get all the way down there. Also, not just north of High Park, we have 10, 12 high rise buildings. So, even though we get to the front door, they still have to climb 20, 30 floors. Right. And the longer it takes to get to a fire, as everyone knows, seconds count. So, you've got a bigger fire, you need another truck. It's just a domino effect. Yeah. Leave this truck here, let it protect the residents, <laughs> the fires, the medical, let it continue the fantastic education it's doing. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. Well, Councillor <laughs> Set. I look forward to a positive vote in January. So do and I. And <laughs> I think the rest of the city actually will come to understand it by then. And uh, we'll talk then. Thank you very much. You're welcome.